And this is all sort of in the industry we call it cabbage. So it's all the stuff that the students uh, didn't use for their collection. So it's interesting because um, Melissa talked in her workshop about you know using those bits of. Uh, she laid out pattern pieces, and then all of the bits in between the pattern pieces. She said well, we need to use this because fashion designers aren't using that. So she's then making clothes from that, and I love that idea because this in a way is the bits of fabric that aren't being used. So this is. This is all fabric that I use. We cut it up into strips and then we got people to write words of hope. And so we were sending them out in the post. Uh, my mum was helping me. So all of the groups that I've worked with, the visually impaired groups, the women from refuge, uh, ethnic groups, people were, that felt, you know, that are pushed out of our box. They're not included in my art. So I wanted to bring those people in and then have their voices heard. So they wrote words of hope and then we set up workshops that made stuff easier because they were one of the partners. So so we wove this, I wove the dress in my studio and the sleeves, uh, luckily the, the templates were big and huge, but I was able to lift those and take those to the museum and get the people who were visiting the museum to weave as well. So we had children weaving. We have people groups we made. So it was a real, it was about over 500 voices in the dress. Um, and I think that's really important to say that, uh, yeah, it, it was, I was really inspired by the poet laureate, uh, Anne Duffy, who talked about um, when she was the poet laureate, she had this idea of going to all the bookshops around the UK in her van with, with another poet tell stories and get people into the bookshops to sort of create this invisible web to enliven, you know, um, something that was dying, which was literature, you know, especially with the, with the internet and the phone. So I think weaving fabric was about, for me, it was about fabric is such a metaphor, you know, fabric. Uh, we all wear it, so we all interact with it every day, and I use it a lot in my art. And it's part of us, the fabric of society. There's loads of metaphors for the word fabric. It is like I see. Fabric is like a skin, a layer, yeah, you know, and so that's, I was in the fashion industry for 30 years, so it's very much part of, uh, <laughs> 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 so, uh, so uh, it's very much part of my, my kind of uh, trajectory as an artist and part of what I do. So this morning, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, how 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 got to this. Um, so this is me. I had a T-shirt that was this T-shirt. Actually, this T-shirt was part of. The, uh, uh, I got women from Refuge who I work with to uh, print these T-shirts, um, and they were printing words of hope, thinking about their lives, and uh, it was really lovely. We exhibited. I did an exhibition in City Hall. I talked to Jane about. It. So this became this, with the help of this. So, uh, yeah, I, I love the idea of weaving new ideas into, like, making new clothes out of old. So this can be a top, lots of different things. So this kind of goes like this, and then you've got the straps on the side. This is what I'm wearing now, and, and these tie to go like that. So they cover up all bits. Um, so we could be as sophisticated with it or as kind of simple with it as we can like. But what's quite nice about this is that you end up with this really beautiful, and you could actually probably put it on the wall as where it's wearing, and I love the idea of wearing art. Yeah. So, how we do it is uh, pretty straightforward, so I'm going to move it there. So, Yes. 
straight lines, but it doesn't really matter. The more the straighter line, the better. So let's have a look. Can use this book. Yeah, I think it's so good to just use whatever you've got to hand. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, lovely. Nice bit of cardboard. Love a bit of cardboard. Turn it bigger. Yeah, perfect. So what I'm going to do with this one is uh, so. I'll be looking at each of your pieces, but I want you to first of all think about, we're going to do a little bit of drawing first. We think about what kind of shape we would like to turn our piece into, once I show you what's possible. So with this, um, I could do lots of different things actually, because for that one I, I just literally cut it up, I put, took the sleeves off, the neck off, and then I cut it into strips, which then gave me the, the skeleton, if you like, the backbone for something I was going to then weave. So this one, I might decide that I want to, yeah, I think I'm going to cut, I'm, I'm sensing there's a line there, so I'm just going to go with what I've got. I'm going to take that off. You have to be quite brave, huh? You have to just go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just go for it. <laughs> okay. I'm very good at, like, especially with fabric. I think because I've, I've, I've studied fashion design, so I've kind of had to unlearn. <laughs> But when I did make clothes, I always worked trying to stand. I was never really... I do teach pattern cutting, but I'm, I'm, I'm much more with my students. I say just go on the stand, you know, decide what you want, because you can make a pattern with paper three-dimensionally. I think I'm a sculptor at heart, really. So yeah. I kind of sculpt. I think fabrics are sculpting. So, uh, yeah, if you want to make any notes, I say that it's a nice to go for it. Um, and uh, so, don't be afraid to... So already we've got quite a lot of nice bits of fabric here to play around with. Um, so we can cut this up. Yeah, um, it's, it's, to me, to get to sculpt on a stand, obviously you need a stand to do, be able to do that. Um, so these are like the pieces. Okay, and we're going to take we're going to take this pack of pieces that are kind of just turning into. I'm not particularly that precise, as you can see. I'm understand how clothes are put together perhaps yes. like I don't understand that so when I'm looking at my t-shirt or whatever it is yeah. how do I start thinking about yeah. what the possibilities could be thank you well let's start with let's have a look at the Deborah's clothes here so when you've got something in front of you what, you, what you're looking for is the fabric you're looking for the big pieces of fabric. Right, so I would therefore take that bit off and just work with this to start with because we're looking to be um, looking for the bones, looking for strips. So um, so I'll come back to that in a minute. So with this t-shirt, and so with this t-shirt, I could have just cut straight up there into the strips straight away, and that's what I recommend for t-shirts. Um, so what, what you do is I'll take off this neck piece. So you want to get get the 
Because this, this bit here, rib, the ribbing, is quite handy because I can then use that as a neck piece to then weave, like, attach things to. I might not use it, but it's good to take that off because you're not going to be able to cut the strips out of that. Yeah. So it might, you know, this is all that. The fiction scissors, but. Uh, so we'll take that bit off. <laughs> and if they don't work, I have other options available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a few options. Then I'm not cutting properly. When you cut, so I know it's kind of obvious, but that bit always goes all around. Yeah. I was never, I mean, I teach this to my students, but I was never shown that. I mean, I know I'm holding it up in the air, but uh, you should always let the scissors do the work. Right, so I'm taking that bit off, and we left with this. And so what we're going to do, and we can dump, we'll keep it uh, folded, because that is, uh, that means we're going to get double everything, which is good. So, I'm going to go straight in there, not holding back. Okay, so we're going to cut some strips out of this, okay? So this is what we're looking for. So, but we've got, you've got plenty there. You've, you've got, it's ideal. Yeah, be fine. Now I have, I've realised what I've done is I've slightly limited myself by taking that bottom piece off. So, that's okay, I'm going to have a smaller weave, so I'm going to do two weaves now. I'm going to have longer strips with that and shorter strips with that. So, it doesn't really have to be like three centimetres five, so it just strips. Okay? Even if you kind of go wrong and it goes a bit wonky, you think, oh no. So, what's lovely about that now is I've got a long strip, the long strips are good. We like long strips. Short ones are fine, but it just gives you a. Jersey pulls itself into works anyway, doesn't it? Jersey's quite good in terms of. Yeah, you get that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When the cotton or the more structured is, it's it's to get tight. And we've got just the stretch element in that. Then you can yeah. make yeah. it quite nice. You could two different cross yeah. put together. Well, yeah. I would say you could mix the white and the pattern there. Mm. Those two together. Yeah. I've got quite a selection, you're welcome to dig in. <laughs> Maybe you don't want the grotty tea towel, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I was really limited because it was there. Um, I just thought, what the hell am I going to use? And then it, I made a little pile of things to take, John to take home, and he goes. And I uh, pinched that off my daughter. Fabulous, this. Yeah. That's really lovely. And once you, because this, this is the bones. So basically, the bones are. With this, I'm cutting up first of all the bones, the, the kind of structure, and then within that, I like looking at the colour and thinking, okay, what works with that? You know, what what would be nice with that? So that's quite nice. The, the, mm. Yeah, those two golds are mm. quite nice. So same for you. Have a look at the colours and see if you can. Because it, 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 what, what we want is a piece of art, really, that mm. we're wearing. You know, it, it's about creativity, it's about putting ideas, uh, putting our talents of being creative, so thinking about how we're going to. Yeah, so. Okay. Before you know it, you've got a massive pile of. Yeah, structure. Yeah. So now we're going to look for the long pieces, and this is where we're going to make our weave. Okay, our tables are really good. I think my mask will take. Thank you. <laughs> right. So what I do is that I, 
um, get people to weave on tables because in lockdown I had um, I was we got a caravan in the garden which is my studio and I started thinking about I want to weave bigger so I started weaving on the door so I used that as a weave as as the uh, the, um, the loom so the loom. These are really good as looms. Yeah. yeah. But it just means you have to put a bit of tablecloth over it if you want to eat on it afterwards, you know. If you're working on it, just to put a tablecloth over it. Sometimes it's a bit bumpy, but you know. Um, but you can weave on anything. You can literally weave on anything. And making your own looms with wet cardboard is ideal. So what you do is you make sure you indent the same. So if I was going to do it there, I was indent there and there, draw a ruler along, so you've got the right hand. Give yourself some indents and then string it round and round and round and round and round and then start weaving. And I'll show you how, because there's two types of weaving. There's a continual weave where you have one long piece of fabric that you're going around and round and round and round, and round, and round which seals the edges. But that's what I'm, I'm not interested in that because that limits you then, but it gives you a lot more work because you'd have to tie all of these together. Um, and that's okay, that's doable. But what's lovely about the home dress and about these is it's all those bits of fabric that dangle that make it really attractive, actually. I personally, I think. I um, thought that about, um, you know, Melissa's collection that she was showing. Yes. Because all of the bits, you could see where they'd come from the offcuts of the patterns, and then they made, like, these beautiful kind of yeah. drapey, hangy bits. And I thought, oh, yeah, I think... So nice. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, um, I, went, I was very lucky in 1999, I went to Tibet, and I saw the prayer flags everywhere, and I think that, on some level... That really went in to my in my psyche. All those prayer flags, like fabric hanging. Yeah. There was little, like so many prayer flags, like layers and layers and layers. And um, and so I think the hope dress was was like a prayer. It was saying a prayer because it was everyone's prayers about hope. Um, and I like I like the fact that so I'm pulling it a little bit tight and I'm sticking the good old masking tape because that comes off. It doesn't stick on, it doesn't take off the fabric of the masking tape, it's very good. Um, so I'm looking for the long ones, which I'm probably going to have to cut this up. So, so I'm going to make my loom here. So I'm going to do it, uh, oh yes, if you can find me. So the next one along. You want a bit of a gap, but not too much. So something like that is good. Make sure you stick the ends quite, because if, especially if you're pulling it a little bit, you don't want it to be mid week. that we've got to do this. Um, now what I do is I don't weave at all with that particular one there because I've only woven, so if I'm going to do it to say there, so if I'm going to do that, that piece of, so I'm thinking frontage or front of a skirt panel or something, so I'm going to do it to about there, then I will probably only weave that and then that becomes the straps for the top, okay? So, uh, and what about if you were doing um, a skirt, for example, would you still leave that much? If you were doing a skirt, you would probably do two small pieces, like sort of there and there. So you would do it on a, yeah, on a bit cardboard, or, um, yeah, you could tweak that side and then that side of the table. Yeah. And then we up to there. Also leave yourself some of these, because these are really handy, especially for kind of 
tying things together. So if you've got a front panel and a back panel of the skirt, on those bits there, instead of going, instead of going up like that, that's a tie up around the neck, I would go sideways on the skirt. Because I've, I've added these pieces, and I've sewn these pieces in so that they tie around my waist. So you would add, you would add some pieces in here, and then so you could tie that to the, the next panel. Yeah. yeah. So you make so that would tie up. So that would be panel one, and then a panel at the back, and then you'd have ties there. And then to get in and out of it, you just. Uh, do the ties. And what's good about it is that because you've got all this excess, it hides the flesh. You know, sometimes people might quite like, you know, the side of their thigh showing. Um, but it doesn't show too much. So when this is sort of on, you know, with nothing on underneath, it doesn't, because you've got these bits that tie around the back that I've added, these straps here, you don't actually see anything because that's covering the boobs. Yes, there's no side boobs. There's, there's no, no side boobs. No, <laughs> no, no. So it that's feels quite glamorous, I think. You well, know, it's really interesting. I walked past a shop the other day, just here, and they had done something similar, but it was just fabric and it was had a, had a kind of channel was going up here, and that you could pull up and down. Whereas this is more, it's very creative. You know, it's just nice to think that you've created that out of something old and that it's your creation and your choice of colours, which I think is really nice. Yeah, so the knots, yeah, so that nice. is... I have to do that knot. Yeah, and I'll show you that <laughs> when we start to weave. Um, so that's how I'll talk. So I'm going to carry on there. So I think all I'm doing is I'll, I'll, I'll just show you, and then if you say to me, right, I want to get started, you want me to show you, I'll actually show you the physical bit of weaving so that you know and then we can get started on your, each of your ones. I'm going to keep this quite small because I just want to demonstrate. Um, right, so now I'm going to come and get my fabric. So, I quite like, um, I'm going to go with that one because I've looked at that one before, I quite like these actually. So what you do is you basically cut yourself in strips. Now, depending on how wide your weave is, when I say how wide it is, so we're going to weave that way. So there's a wall for the weft for um, weaving, which is um, horizontal and the vertical, okay? So you always have to have your structure to, that you're going to then weave into, okay? So, and I'm going to probably just weave to there. Um, so, your pieces are going to be about that wide, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up, I'll just show you so it makes sense. I'm just going to cut up there. So that's the width of our pieces, because that gives us a bit of overhang. Now, these, I tend to cut them about just, you know, a, a nice size. So I'll do a few of those. And then I need to think about, so I'm going to cut a load of those. And then I'm going to cut myself some of that one as well. So I'm actually quite like the, uh, just a tiny bit of that, yeah, because I'm not going to use it on it, so you, you can use it. Actually, no, I'm just going to stick this to it. Same distance. As you can see, it's not, I'm not measuring, I'm not getting the tape measure out. It's got to be. What's up? I like that. There's nothing's like. Yeah, it's a creative, it's a very organic, creative kind of process. And um, that's what we need to. We just need it to make it easy for us to be able to, because what the, the creation, the creation is when we start putting this together, so, now we think it's under and over, literally under and over, okay, so that's what we're going to be doing, so if I've gone under on the first one, I'm going to go over on the next, the next, next layer, 
So I'm going to go over under. To be quite honest with you, it's, it's better for me to have more because then it, um, but I'll stick with this for now. And what you do is you kind of pull it down as you're going. So that one's over, so you're going to go under. Under, over, under, over. And once you start, this is where, this is where it starts becoming like a piece of art because you start seeing how you're kind of, you know, Oh, do I need anything more in that? I'm going to, am I going to stick to a pattern or am I going to keep it random? You're going to ask yourself all those questions. Uh, do I like it with just two colours? Do I want to add in another colour? I mean, I quite like that lemon. There was a bit of that yeah. lemon t-shirt left. Let's look. The thing is, there's not enough really of that lemon to kind of make it. But it doesn't matter, just having a small piece of it. I've woven in everything and anything. Yes, yeah, so that's about the same. We'll have a couple of bits of that just to give it a bit of a highlight. So you're kind of painting really in the fabric. You know, and if you want to have a bit of a protest or something, I don't know, if you just want to start weaving in some affirmations possibly about health or happiness or, you know, um, let's say. Uh, I am. I am, that's nice. I am. Oh yeah, you've got a lovely. But that's what's so beautiful about, yeah, is that, that nobody yeah. knows it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could write in, I, was, I don't know whether any of you do this, but when I, if I have to, we moved into, we moved a lot because we were renting, so we moved into this house and we painted the walls and so I wrote affirmations on the wall and painted over it. Because I wanted the feeling of having, like, I wanted to have all my guardians on the walls, you know, and so I kind of put all of my deities and all of the things I think about put them all over the walls, but then we painted over it. I mean, it would be quite nice to actually have them just there. It's like a graffiti, but I, yeah, it's, uh, it was our house. So it was, um, and this is a bit the same. It's like, you will see a bit of that. You'll, you might see that, but you know what the words are. So it's quite nice to weave in some words if you want to. And then that can be part of a pattern, actually. Like you get a little bit of that, so I might do a three, three, and then one of another lemon. Three, three, and then another lemon. Um, so I'm going to go that way again. It doesn't really matter. Like, can you see? It doesn't matter that there's that bit involved in it. It doesn't really matter because what matters. Is, is, the, is the combination of all of these things, not just one on its own, which is kind of collective, you know? That's what the dress was all about. It was about um, people coming together, and the weave is, the weave is so ancient, isn't it, in our, um, I think probably weaving. My mum in, in lockdown started investing and uh, in researching ancestry. I'm sure many of you have done a little bit, all your parents, but anyway, she's very into ancestry. She's amazing. She's dug out all these records, but she found a photograph of a couple living in the east, east, east end of London, because my grandparents were in the east end, and uh, they had a huge loom in their front room, and there was this beautiful light coming in, and it was the man who sat on the loom, doing the looming, and the woman was sat at the table doing a cup of tea and telling him what to do. <laughs> I love that. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so basically, there we are. Yeah, I do. Because although that bit sticks out a little bit there, once we start pulling in the next layer, it doesn't really matter because you won't see it. And actually, it's, a, it's, it's kind of, it's that sense of, um, so again, we're going to see how wide we want to go. So we want to go, we want to make sure we have a bit of an overhang. So we're going to cut up from there. And then we're going to cut more strokes. So, the next layer, and always remember to alternate your layers. So the next layer, and also this fabric, you've got that side and that side, which is quite 
quite nice. You've got a pagan colour on the dog. So as you see, once you start layering in that, and that, that might be alright, you know. The, also, another thing you can do is if you want to get really creative, you can take bits and you can start tying them into the wing. So I'm here at an upcycling workshop with Elaine Foster Gandhi and we have lots of work in progress. So I'm here with Jane Platt who is going to explain to us a little bit about what she's doing at this weaving workshop. Hello everybody. Um, I'm going to actually, I've decided I want to secure this into place. So I'm going to do some stitch work down the other side um, and hope it holds itself. And then as Elaine has shown us some really interesting knot work, I thought I'd add some knot work into this area. Um, and then I'm really, uh, I'm also working with some beads, but the beads will work really well on here so that will be like a muted gold, a turquoise and a soft green. I thought I could finish that off later. Thank Sounds you. beautiful. However, then what you do is you tie these up and you double knots. So you do one and then you do two. And then that gives you, that seals all of that, yes. stops it from unraveling. Okay? Right. And then you've got all of these that you can then play with in terms of a, a strap. Yes. What you want to do. And then what I would do is, and then when you take this bit off at the bottom, this is the bit that uh, again, you can knot those two two together, knot it. Actually, you can do that now. So let's do that yeah, now, because we're going to take that little knot left and that. If not, we can sew. That's the other thing, is if we didn't have enough, we could sew that, which wouldn't be a problem. 